good season kind of maybe surpassed your expectations maybe early on of, of, uh, of how many long balls you might guys might be able to hit? Um, I mean, I didn't really, uh, you know, quite honestly, you know, I, I've been asked that an awful lot, you know, as it has, you know, the, the power numbers exceeded my expectations, those kind of things. I think the biggest thing about going into this year about whether we were going to hit for power or not, you know, the answer to that question was, I don't know. I mean, quite honestly, I mean, when you lose, you lose 40 home runs between two players, you, you simply don't know. You don't know if, um, you know, if, if guys that are playing for you that, that didn't play every day for you, uh, didn't have stripes on their sleeves, had not put up power numbers uh, in the past. The only, really, the only two guys who had done that for us were Bird and Logan had shown that they can hit, um, <clears throat> can hit the ball out of the ballpark at this level um, on a regular basis. So we just, quite honestly, we just didn't know if we were going to hit for power or not. Um, you know, that being said, you know, early on, uh, we've been able to do that. And I think it, that what you're seeing is, is, you know, number one, we've got guys like Teodosio and guys like Hall, and uh, they're a year older, you know, and, and they played some last year as true freshmen. Um, you know, our strength staff does an unbelievable job. Our guys are more physical than they were as freshmen, those guys in their second year. Uh, so, uh, you know, I hope it continues. I mean, again, you know, you hit the ball out of the ballpark, you're going to score some runs, and we certainly did today. We scored 11 runs today and hit three home runs. Uh, so I think, you know, hitting home runs again is just a byproduct of getting good pitches to hit up in the zone and taking a good swing. So that's the biggest thing that we promote. You know, whether we're a, a team that's going to hit home runs for the long haul this year or not, I don't know, but we will continue to preach and preach and preach, be aggressive to the pitch up in the zone and take your best swing every time. That's, that's a big key to our offense is, you know, when you, when you take a hack, take your best hack. And uh, we talk about it um, all the time. It's a staple in our program, and hopefully we'll continue to do that. And this current run of success in the series, mm -hmm. the, the routine of losing the first one, then coming here and winning, and then winning game three, I mean, What's your comfort level when you come to this particular ballpark, or how do you, how are you addressing your players after losing that opening game and then coming in here for the neutral side game? Well, you know, my big message after the game last night <clears throat> um, was to try to keep our spirits up because it's it's so, it's so tough, it's it's so tough to lose at home and lose a one-run game. You know, where you feel like you have some opportunities to score runs and win the game. Um, it's so tough, and, and you see the kids, and they're down in the dumps because they've competed as hard as they can and just couldn't find a way to get to win. So for me, as, as the head coach, it's trying to get their spirits up and, and getting them to understand what did we do well. And we had a lot of really good at-bats last night. Um, you know, our pitching staff did a phenomenal job in game one. We just had the one tough inning. You know, besides that, we pitched very well. We swung the bats very well. Uh, we just came up a run short. And, you know, the big key for us is Saturday, game two in a series, most of the time is the most important game. Uh, and the reason being is you lose on Friday night. A lot of times one pitch, two pitches here and there on Friday nights wins you or loses you the game because of the quality of the arms and the heightened awareness of the defense and the pitching staffs on Friday nights. So a lot of times it'll boil down to one or two pitches here or there, whether you win or lose that game. Saturday's game either wins you the series or gets you right back in the series. So that's our big message. When we lose a game on Friday night, hey, look, we've got Davis Sharp going tomorrow. We've got a loaded bullpen going tomorrow. We play well in this ballpark. We got a good offensive club. All we got to do is put together some good at bats, pitch well out of the pen behind our starter, play good defense, we're going to get right back in this series, and we did. And now we got to go to a tough place to play. Um, and they've got a really good starter going tomorrow in Morgan. Uh, so we're going to have our hands full tomorrow. You know, Coach Kingston has a really good club. They'll be ready to go. There'll be a, a big crowd there, a tough crowd uh, for us tomorrow. We just got to focus on what we do between the lines, and hopefully we can uh, play good baseball tomorrow and see what happens. Coach, you scored five straight one runs today with two outs. How good was it to see them come up clutch with the two out? Big, yeah. big, you know, two out hitting, again, is just, it's just staying in the strike zone, taking good swings in the strike zone with runners on base. And, and uh, you know, it was really good to see us do that. When we're, when we're coming up with two out hits and putting together – uh, opportunities to score runs with two outs like we did today, uh, that's when your offense is really clicking on all cylinders. And I thought we did that today. I thought our at-bats were much better. 
Um, you know, we, we still had a few too many strikeouts, but we also faced some really good arms. So uh, overall, we, it was just better approaches for us today, and um, we took advantage of some mistakes up in the strike zone. Knowing the environment that you're walking into tomorrow, mm -hmm. what's the thing you want to see from your team in a true hostile environment this early in the season? Just, what can you learn from your team? You know, for me, it's just embrace it. I, I think that's the big key. Again, you know, this is, this is why you come to play at Clemson. You know, because you want to play in hostile environments against high-quality competition and challenge yourself at the highest level of college baseball. That's why you come to Clemson. So, for me, it's all about embracing it. Embrace the big crowd. We know there's going to be a lot of people that are not pulling for us tomorrow, right? We know that we're playing against a really good club at their home ballpark. So, it's going to be a tough environment for us. But, you know what? The tougher it is, the better we like it. That's the way it's got to be. If you want to have a good club, you got to embrace playing in tough environments. And we know we're going to be uh, we're going to be in for a tough challenge tomorrow. And again, hopefully, we just embrace it, go out and play, and, and enjoy the opportunity to do it, and see what happens. What was the difference between last night and tonight with runners in scoring position and with those two out hits? You know, quite honestly, I, I think I think the difference today um, is just. The, uh, the adrenaline of Friday night and the anticipation of getting to Friday night and knowing what's going on in this series, you know, probably just being able to just take a deep breath after getting game one is over, I thought we were more relaxed, you know, quite honestly. A lot of times, you know, on Friday nights, you got the big crowd, you're playing at home, uh, you're playing against your rival, they got a great club. You know, sometimes, you know, everybody's just so amped up on Friday night. I thought today we were just more relaxed. It was just it was just more of a routine for us game-wise. I just felt like our guys were way more laid back today. And we play our best baseball when we're more laid back, relaxed, and just go out there and compete and have fun. And I, I thought we did a better job of that today. I thought we stayed within ourselves a little bit more today. Coach, you knew what you had in T.O. as a center fielder. Last year, he struggled a little bit at the plate. Um, mm -hmm. Now he's leading the team in batting average, home runs, and RBIs. Mm -hmm. is, is this what you were expecting to see from him offensively this season? You, you just talked about how hard he worked in the offseason. Well, guys like Hall and T.O., you know, they, they, they're very similar guys. You know, these guys are they're just baseball players. They're tough. Uh, T.O., when we recruited him, we saw a big, strong, fast kid that had tools but was raw. You know, just raw as dirt as a true freshman and just needed at bats, needed to develop. Um, and, you know, he got overmatched a little bit as a true freshman, but he had the mental toughness to be able to handle it. And I think that's the thing that, that you see with Bryce. The one thing that I can sign off on Bryce Teodosio with is that kid is mentally tough. And, and, and when he goes through struggles at the plate, he's not going to take it with him on defense. He's going to impact the game on defense for us and help us win games any way he can. That's what I like so much about him. It, it, this team means an awful lot to Bryce Teodosio. He is a completely selfless, does everything he can to help us win. So, uh, you know, I'm very proud of him. I'm, I'm proud of the, the maturation process that he's went through as a player. What do you like about Hall as a leadoff hitter? Um, he gets on base. I mean, that, that's the big thing. I mean, we're looking for a guy in the leadoff spot who gets on base. You know, on base percentage is a big deal for us. The one thing that Sam can do too, Sam will battle with two strikes. Sam can put the ball in play. He's got good hand-eye coordination, good bat-to-ball skill. You want that in a leadoff guy. When he gets on base now, he's looking to run, and he can steal bases. He's probably the most instinctual base runner, base stealer. He and Kier, those two guys have a real good feel on the bases when it comes to being able to pick opportunities to steal. Uh, so uh, that's why if he gets on base, you have to focus on him, which you got Logan Davidson coming up in the two-hole, a hot birdie coming up in the three-hole. If Sam's on base, they have to worry about him, which takes their attention just a little bit off the hitter at the plate and, uh, you know, gives them opportunities to drive runs in. Davis seemed invisible in his first 11 innings. They got to him a little bit early today. Um, what can he take away from this to learn from? You know, he just didn't have his best stuff. He didn't have command of his slider. I think that's the biggest thing. He's just the slider was, was just staying arm side. He couldn't command it and get in a rhythm and get a feel for that pitch. I think the big thing he's got to learn from today is when you don't have your breaking ball, you got to be able to throw your fastball in there and let your defense work for you. Um, and he just he wasn't able to command his pitches quite as good as he usually does. He got um, in some bad counts and some advantage counts for the hitters, and they were able to do some damage, hit some balls hard against him. Thank you, guys. Hi, guys.